I want to move on to what Doug Cameron had to say during the week. He's frustrated that the ideals of the left have been stolen by the Greens and, the, well, he, he seems to suggest that uh, they've had a lobotomy. Here he is. <laughs> it seems to be like having a political lobotomy. You know, you're actually, your brain is just ripped apart. You can't think about things. You're not allowed to talk about things. Um, and really, you know, we don't want zombie politicians. We come from a political party that believes we are strengthened by being members of a team, uh, and the way the team works is we have those discussions internally uh, and work things through through our own processes. So the executive are ripping their brains out. And <laughs> I, think, I think he was trying to... I think he should have said that about a year ago when Kevin Rudd was mm. Prime Minister, and I think mm. Julie Gillard would have been most annoyed that... He's confused the, the, the time frame for that She's attack. She's also set up processes to try to give caucus more of a say. Now, again, their work's in progress. We'll see if it actually happens that way. And also, in that very same interview, he managed to get around his own lobotomy and put forward an idea about gay marriage different to he that did. of his party. So he wasn't entirely lobotomised himself. Now, there was that moment in the Parliament when the building, uh, the education revolution uh, issue came up. Christopher Pyne wanted an inquiry into it, and then it came to a vote, and, uh, and he went missing. And the question is whether... That was a tactical move on his part. Uh, Anthony Albanese wasn't particularly generous. Here he is. You wouldn't compare him with Rocky Balboa, Order. but it's a bit like it's Order. a bit like the heavyweight championship Order. fight, where you challenge your opponent, you go on about it day after day, week after week, month after month, Order. and then you don't turn up when the vote's on. Well, Mr. Albanese um, often uh, goes off half cocked. Um, when he doesn't know the full facts. It became quite apparent to me at half past eight this morning, having spent the week negotiating with the independents, uh, that the motion, the bill on the judicial inquiry would not be successful. So his argument was, I didn't want to lock the independents in at this point because I didn't have their support, so I'll focus on the Senate instead. Is that reasonable? Is that what happened? He should have taken the loss, really. I mean, he's just done a Kevin Rudd there on the ETS. I'm not going to win this thing. I'll go off and talk about something else. I mean, this was... It was, it was his fight, and he did walk away from it. Mm. But the interesting thing about that whole uh, run of private members' bills was that the independents were prepared to go one way and the other, depending on the issue. Mm. They didn't go with the coalition on that issue. They voted up Andrew Wilkie's shield laws for journalists' bill. They went with the coalition on youth allowance um, matters. They prepared to look at things on their merits, just like they always said they would. And so one would think that maybe the coalition will figure out over time that rather than beating up on these mm. independents, it would be smart to be nice yeah. to them and argue their case to them because if you do that, sometimes they're persuaded. And isn't there a great deal of excitement around the building when these private members' bills get up? But then it's, it's likely to be par for the course for the next couple of years. And what difference does it make? I bet you 99 citizens out of 100 couldn't even tell you what those private members' bills have got up we're about. Well, the banner shield laws for journalists make a difference to us. Yeah, well, the, it's a rare the, youth <laughs> the youth allowance changes make a big difference for some <laughs> students in the bush. I mean, you know, some, some, if you only one want to talk I about maintain it. 99 out of 100 will not know. And I think that increasingly a pattern is becoming obvious. The private members' bills will get up when they talk about the future. When it comes to asking the independents to justify their support for a government that is, is responsible for failures, like with the building of the education revolution, they don't want to know. Okay. Well, God help us, the independents. We've got to move on. Sorry. More with our panel shortly. Lenore Taylor, George Megalogenius and Andrew Bolt. But now here's Mike Bowers and Talking Pictures.